Hello, and welcome to Scuttlebutt, the war movie review podcast. We're happy to have you with us as we take a look at films from the dawn of cinema to today. We aim to provide a raw and unapologetic review of each film's cinematography, historical accuracy, and delivery. In the process of analysis, certain details will be revealed. These spoilers are only divulged to ensure a fair assessment of each film. We join the hunt for Bin Laden this week with Catherine Bigelow's 2012 Global War on Terror epic, Zero Dark Thirty. As always, I'm joined by Mike A. Hello. Mike B. Yes, sir. And Nate. Every time I had something with Bigelow Gigolo again. That's what I said last time. It fucking made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, I was in I was in second grade one time. Yeah, yeah that's a very funny. Mature. I'm still in it. Never, I never left. What can I say? This man has <laughs> children. <laughs> it's Deuce Gigolo no, male fucking. or fuck? What is it? Deuce Bigolo male, male Gigolo. Gigolo, Gigolo. Gigolo. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, my dyslexia kicked in and I switched it. So this yeah, I'm, I'm now ashamed. It, I know that now it kicked in. I got you. So guys, what'd you think? <laughs> Uh, shouldn't be laughing. Serious subject matter. Yeah, I know it's very serious. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but uh, yeah, okay. So yeah, Mike Gay, why don't you go first, man? Um, yeah. So uh, there's some hot women working for the CIA. No, um, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> um, definitely but, on the what scale. they don't all have neck tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, you know, but um, but uh, what the hell was I gonna say? Even I don't even remember now. Um. You just fucked it up already. I did right there, but uh, no, I, I thought it was uh, I, I, the uh, the first half was more intriguing to me than the uh, the second. Maybe that's different really? for everyone else. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I kind of okay. felt the whole like build up to everything to where it was going. Once it got into like you know what the plan was and what was going on, it was kind of like okay, you know the beats and stuff like that. And I already know kind of what's going to happen, but uh, I don't know. I kind of felt the whole like what what are you laughing about? No, no, no. Well, no. that's because that's you, you were, were there, there, Michael. You were there, Mike. You were there. Why don't you tell me what happened exactly? In, in I'm that, talking in that... about the movie, not the actual thing. Yeah, well, you're, you, what you're telling me, if you're such a patriot, is why don't you tell me what happened there? Sorry. It's your Sorry. The way you said it, it's compound. like, oh, I know what happens. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Yeah, because you're scatterbrained right now. Yeah, it's, yeah, fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's, it's fine. fine. I know the surface level of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's. Yeah, yeah let's I know the Wikipedia it. page of what happened. They threw stones yeah. in the bag, Michael. It sank. I've read <laughs> Wikipedia too, and it doesn't really match up with what I've heard <laughs> from Na- Navy Shields. Sorry, and I Brian. know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we're done. I'm Mike done. I'm done. Arms. Yeah. Um, right. But. Uh, <laughs> It kind of reminded me of like movies like um, Munich and Zodiac, where it's about like this, you know, these real things, and then this one person who kind of gets attached to it and their obsession with the whole thing. Um, and I always think that's interesting. So um, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I didn't, I know I didn't love it, but uh, it's one of those movies where I need to watch it again so I can, like, you know, I'll, I'll kind of foresee what's going to happen next. Um, and pick up little things here and there. But I, I thought it was pretty good. You know, pretty long, but pretty good. Yeah, two and a half hours. Yeah. I was actually surprised by that. Well, you know, it's a, it's a, covers a, you know, a, a long time. So, yeah. Like, so it's like a 10 year period. So, you know, jokes aside, I mean, it is a movie I kind of have always kind of stayed away from just because I normally don't really like the wartime movies around this era per se specifically one kind of really surrounded uh specifically around like 9-11 era and all that kind of stuff and so it's just not really my forte so I don't really know much about the era because I lived through it so it's like you know I, I don't do the deep dives like I do with World War II but that being said um I've stayed away from it just because I was waiting for um bad boys to type of fucking movie you know ura ura we 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 bagged the bin laden and it's like <laughs> i i i didn't it, it wasn't that thankfully thank god 
Zero Dark Thirty colon We Bagged the Bin Mulan. <laughs> that was the original title. <laughs> San yeah. Andreas. So I just I just I just wasn't like in the mood to watch this movie. Yeah. Like the trailers were abysmal of the time, if I remember correctly. Like they made it feel like a Michael Bay movie. And if I if I remember that correctly, I could be confusing it with Benghazi, but you know, the 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 main consensus for me pretty much is I enjoyed it a lot more uh than I thought I would. Uh I also was very surprised. I knew we knew this I I knew this beforehand before I watched it, but it's the same director as the Hurt Locker. So, you know, you had that to compare to and everything we've said about that movie and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I was pleasantly surprised with the way the information flowed, the scenes flowed, the way it was shot, the cinematography, you know, it wasn't crazy. It just was, you know, normal. I think I think Hurt Locker had better cinematography in terms of unique shots, just shittier up close Jason Bourne uh, for the most part. So to compare it to that, I think it was very well evenly laid out. Um but uh no, I mean like I stay away from it all these years, but I'm I'm glad I've watched it now. Probably will end up going back to watch it just so that I'm not having to review every little bit of it. Um and just kind of relax and watch it almost. Um I will say it has a very powerful um start to everything and how they kind of lay out the information. And even though it's a huge amount of time, I think they lay out all that information really well. Um but that's just my two cents. In terms of whether it's correct or not, I don't know. I, I again, I don't have a deep dive. But as a, I guess a film guy, it was pretty well done. I think. I'll jump in. Um, yeah. So this is probably the third time I've seen this movie, and the first time I saw it was in theaters, and it was a very strange time for me, at least, because it was like a month after Sandy Hook, or no, as a, it was like two weeks after Sandy Hook happened. And I grew up in the town that was next to Sandy Hook in Connecticut. And so, you know, we knew a lot of people, um, whatever, a lot of connections. So it was strange, you know, to, to see this film, which we were all really looking forward to all year because it looked really good. Um, and then for that to happen, whatever. So it's, you know, have very strange memories with this film, but saw it with a good friend of mine. And uh, no, it was... Um, it's very interesting, you know. It's a film that really had to get made. Um and it got made again within a year or a year and a half of the raid happening in Pakistan on the compound. Um you know, it's it is a bit long. It is a bit winded. Um but so is the almost decade long, you know, struggle to find bin Laden. And I feel like this is everything that the Hurt Locker isn't in such a good way. And, you know, um, it's made by the same person. I know, but, yeah. like, it's, it, it, it's, it's like the movie Twins. They have the joke <laughs> where it's like, all the good stuff went into you. <laughs> wait. And all the wait, shit. <laughs> wait, wait. That is wait. a hell of an analogy. The <laughs> quote, I understand, don't. Compare Zero Dark Thirty to fucking Twins. Twins to, okay, to, to Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> Danny DeVito movie. <laughs> I I just what we're all tired. We've all had our work days today. I just I just want to call that out. <laughs> so, so fucking Nate, are you gonna make a thumbnail where it's like this movie, but with <laughs> Schwarzenegger and DeVito like photoshopped in Osama and DeVito together? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, going. Going. sorry. I, I, I get I, your, I, your, I, I, I get well, your, your weird yeah, analogy. I, 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 I get it's your quote, funny. But, but the, but, the, but don't say it the way you said it. Well, it's just funny because you know the Hurt Locker is so bad, and this is so good, and the Hurt Locker is so bad for the same reasons that this one's so good. You know, they're they're kind of tied together, I guess, in a way, a different reference, um, that uh. Flags of Our Fathers and Letter Sing Bujima, you know, they're tied together. Like, they're very similar, you know, yin and yang type of films. And so, you know, are those, these two films. Um, but this one is just so much better. It's just very surprising, you know. Uh, look at the sniper scene in fucking 
uh, Hurt Locker and look at the raid in this and it's like, that was the same person? Really? Really? You know, like, huh. Well, what's you know. the what's the time difference? Like, this was made in 2012. When was the Hurt Locker made? It was oh, eight, eight, three or four eight. years. Okay, yeah. so there's a little gap in there. I don't know. Maybe she learned some things from that she wanted to do differently or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 an up step from like C's get degrees. The same, you know. Like, but uh, anyway, no. It's um, it's a really good movie. It's very interesting, and uh, I look forward to talking about it more. So, I guess it'd be my turn then. Um. Yeah, it was um, it was a movie for sure. It was way too long, I thought. Like we've talked about a little bit, and I'll explain why I thought it was too long and what parts were too long. What, you don't like office drama? <laughs> no, I don't. And especially when it's <laughs> like, it could have been a bridge to like maybe half hour, 45 minutes of that shit. Instead of an hour and a half. Or almost, actually no, hour and 45 um, it's like, yeah, okay. I think it could have been cut to about a half hour, 45 minutes. And then the action shit could have been the other half hour, 45 minutes tops. Right. It could have been, it could have been a fucking, it could have been a hundred and uh, uh, 20 minute film, um, maybe 150 minute film, but it was fucking way longer than what I think it needed to be. However, that being said, the acting, well, Okay, so the acting, there was a few weak actors. I can't remember their, I don't know their acting names. Like, I don't know. But um, there were a few weak actors that were just kind of like very robotic and like fucking wooden and whatever. That happens in every film. I get that. Um, I did like the fact that like, they actually got James Gadden Alfini to come in and play a shit bag, like top, top end fucking CIA guy. And he's just, he acted like a shit bag. Cause they all are fuck them. But like, um, he was like, okay, so what do we got when they're, when they're like, uh, kind of staging the compound. You sure like, it's James them? Gandalf. Oh, oh, uh, that is. Yeah. That James Gandalf. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm a hundred fucking percent. No, no, you're right. Gandalf. No, you're right. I yep, thought he yep. died in like, a he died in like 09 or something like that. I'm no, sorry. No, no, no. Okay. He died in the 20 aught. Or the, he died in, yeah. tw- in 2013. I just, it, yep. I just, I sorry. I, I just yeah, he was in other case. stuff too. But like, um, getting him in there, like he played a piece of shit, and he's well, that was him. Yeah, sorry. Well, yeah, but he's a really good. He didn't have to act. Like, I'm not saying he was a piece of shit. I'm just saying like, he didn't have to like go Tony Soprano on that shit. He just acted like any asshole in the upper echelon of the CIA would act. And like, oh well. I, I, I want to see that within a week. And then they show 90 days, fucking 112 days. He doesn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And anyway, I, I'm getting very scatterbrained because I actually loved his performance. It was one of those niche performances in this film that I actually fucking loved. Cause that was really good. But, um, so yeah, the chick, uh, Jessica, what the hell is the actress? Jessica Chastain. Chastain. Yeah. Good looking chick. I don't, I don't know the story of the real chick. I don't know. I think right? she's made up, made of like a different people. I think she's mostly. She's an amalgamation. Yeah. And so they just kind of. Pr- pr- she's like 30 <laughs> or 40 different people put into one, but there was oh, one yeah. lead female that was um, on it for the whole 10 years yeah. that was really that, like a hard driver. But yeah, she is a real amalgamation. All of them are. You know, well, the, 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 that, that's the whole point huge is like. Hunt. It, it, it's made for cinema. And so that right there, I'll get into my next point here in a second. That right there is kind of what took a lot of the first hour and a half away is like the office shit, right? Just like the amalgamation, like people trying to be people that they're not necessarily like their personality or whatever. But like, um, so we get to the, we get to the actual action sequences, right? Um, and then I, I won't, I won't go, I won't go to, into a deep dive because we got to talk about it. But like, I thought the action sequences were good because if I remember correctly, did they not? actually have legit like former Navy SEALs are active doing that work. I, I have film? no idea. I believe. Yeah. I think they use like one of the original, um, or they did not the original one, but they did build a whole mock-up of the actual, uh, compound and everything. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, but like this the came out right themselves. around the time that no easy day came out as well. I'm pretty sure he was a consultant. 
the guy that he wrote the book. That's the guy that shot Bin Laden. That's the oh memoir. okay okay so um but anyway like the actual like the seals like their tactics and like the the way they shot that the, that whole sequence actually didn't have too many issues with that. There's a couple, but we'll discuss that later. But like that was really fucking cool. Yeah, the raid is brilliant, and the fucking like stealth Blackhawks, you know. It's a very <laughs> slow burn, but then the last 45 minutes is like you can't really look away. Except for no, Michael. you can't. And then Michael they did, knows they what happens. It. So they did, yeah, but no, that's fine. <laughs> that's why I'm saying we can discuss this. We'll discuss it. But like, I thought, I thought the last, yeah, it was kind of like, um, honest to God, for me, it was like um, the Michael. Reward. What happened? Did Belani get away? He's, he's wanting you to do your Jesse Ventura. Thing. Sorry. Is it? Is sorry, it like? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Is it like the end of uh, of Fuck Team America? Right. We're gonna cockroach. get into that. We will get into that. It's gonna be a spicy fucking. Oh pot. no, I don't. No, no, it's gonna be my actual thoughts. But like, do you do push spot. the body in the water? No, shut the fuck up. Oh, I don't eat put stones in the body. My, my name is Alex is Jones. Part. So anyway, um, so just to the final thoughts or uh, the initial thoughts, um, the action sequences were actually pretty well done. And then like, whatever, but like it was, I don't know. It's, I guess it's personal preference of like, if you want to know more about what happened leading up to it and all the details, if that's even what the fuck happened, because whatever, but like, um, and it took forever. Yeah, I know. I'm about done. And, um, but yeah, the the uh, the final sequence of the action, pretty fucking cool. And then yeah, it's like okay, it's done, bam, and then she gets on a C one thirty and is crying, and it's like okay, well, I like I actually like the ending, like she's on there crying because you don't know why she's crying. So anyway, that's those are, those are my opening thoughts. So I want to touch on something that Nate said. Um... I remember, you know, watching at the theaters and the opening is just so powerful. You know, it says so much without showing anything. Mm -hmm. And I don't care mm -hmm. who you are, you know, um, it, it just is very hard to watch. Now, all of us are, you know, late 20s, early 30s. We remember where we were. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's, uh, nope. I don't know. I, I know we have a lot of millennials and Zoomers and Gen Z or whatever. We have a very, very pop, you know, group of people that listen to the podcast. Um, so I know a lot of you will remember where you were, but, you know, it, it was such a generational thing. I mean, the world s stood still for a good 48 hours, I'd say. And it's just, you know, everybody remembers where they were when they turned the TV on. You know, it was just very, very poignant, especially, you know, I'm 90 minutes outside the city, tons of firefighters and stuff from local PDs and fire departments rushed down to the city, just, just drove there. They didn't give a shit. They saw that what was like going on, you know, tons of friends that were there and stuff, you know, very affected by the events of, of 9-11 and, you know, just to have that as the beginning to this just to set the stage because you could say what you want about Sari and the the tactics that were used you know that's facts that that's you know the waterboarding and there's a bunch of other ones that we could talk about too but that being said you know this just goes to show the beginning of all of this good bad the ugly you know it was September 11th that was the beginning and that's just it was the best way to show and tell without showing anything you know it's just there's nothing else like yeah it was because they, i was expecting i was ex i was expecting footage but they just had the audio yeah so it was black, black and I, i've yeah i know all of those audio bits too i've heard them before mm -hmm. so it's yeah, like, same, you know, yeah someone from like yeah like our generation like knows that immediately see where it started and see where it ended you know mm -hmm. but that's the best way that they could have you know, show the beginning of this film. And it just, it lays the groundwork of why the events you're about to see happened. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And it doesn't justify them. It doesn't make them right or wrong. But it just says, here's why it, this happened. It, it really sets the stage for, you know, this is two movies in one. It's The Hunt and it's The Raid. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's fighting the needle in the haystack because, you know, as the, you kind of showed through the interviews and stuff, 9-11 was both their best achievement for the Taliban or Al Qaeda and the worst day ever because on the 12th, now you're at war with the West and very quickly, you know, task force Ranger and other means within six weeks, the 10th Mountain division there and the coalition is there in Afghanistan and they wanted a war with the West, but they didn't expect them to arrive in Afghanistan that quickly by the fall of 01. So very quickly, you know, everything splinters. I don't know what the fuck to do or where to go. So, you know, we are thus left with a, a very shoddy list of the leaders of these organizations where we want to get back at for the attacks on 9-11 and the funders of 9-11. And basically these guys scattered into the wind. So it was this very long period of time hunting these people down. You know, a lot of them did end up in Tora Bora, but due to a lot of reasons, this, that, and the other thing, um, we were not able to get Bin Laden and a lot of the higher ups. I think he was in Pakistan as early as 04 or 05. That's when they built the compound in Abbottabad. Um, but, uh, or is it Islamabad? I might be getting that wrong. I think but it's anyway. Islamabad, but that's, that's I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to shut up. I don't know that shit. I know, I anyway. know 1945 back. Jamie, look it up. Yeah. But anyway. Jamie, look it up. <laughs> Jamie, look it up. And so. Islam. <laughs> anyway. Um, Islam but uh, Islamabad is a huge city in Pakistan. Like it's. Yeah. I forget it's if it's Abbottabad or Islamabad. The it's the one that has the military school. How do you say it? Obama. Abbottabad. Whatever. Abbottabad. Abbottabad. Obamabad. Here's Nathan. Abbottabad. I found it. Um, Abbottabad, right? Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Mm -hmm. It's got a carousel in it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Yelp review? <laughs> Want to go? No Osama bin Laden, zero out of ten. Oh Christ! But um, so yeah, they do show intelligence gathering, and like I'd mentioned, you know, really these guys had just been thrown to the wind, and they had to you know figure out what happened to everybody intelligence and... with very high fucking air quotes well so the interesting thing is that basically the military in the 90s in the early 2000s was a very interesting place interrogators are basically reservists at this point you know there really wasn't this system of interrogation that was built into you know the military so when we went into Afghanistan and we didn't know really what to do or, or, or who to look for, first off, we looked for the Westerners, you know, anybody who was not from Afghanistan because they were in the camps. They were the guys that basically were part of the jihad groups that were in the Al Qaeda and part of the Taliban. You know, the, the idea was that if you couldn't read Islam or anything, you were sent to certain groups. Then they <clears> went after the names. Can't that read knew. Islam. Sorry. You can't read, um, certain Arabic <laughs> dialects you were not allowed you, some of you, the you, you weren't allowed in some of the groups so a lot of the westerners like some of the Australians and the Americans and some of the guys from like uh, North Africa and stuff they don't speak Arabic in groups. Afghanistan he's been up at five Mike <laughs> I know I know, I'm just I know. gonna I'm say just, that just, sorry Brian I'm, go ahead I'm just I'm, I'm just saying it no, so we're trying to find everything scattered into the wind, and there's really no infrastructure to back up how to find out this information. So long story short, they ended up using SARE tactics, which was these search and evade tactics where they basically diluted from experiences of U.S. pilots in the Vietnam War and what they went through when they were interrogated by the North Vietnamese and everything. So one of those things that came up was waterboarding. And waterboarding quickly became a tactic that was used for intelligence gathering by some segments as really a, a easy way to, you know, find out information. There was a bunch of other ways that they did it. There was sleep deprivation. 
there was food deprivation, there was music deprivation, uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of other shit that they did that's really horrible to get into as well. So, well, one of the things that I remember in the movie is when they come in, they're like blasting like heavy metal or something. <laughs> Uh, that was that was something that was done in the eighties in Grenada and Panama, yeah, and, and the two thousands in Camp X Ray and, oh yeah, yeah. So it's a, but like the, the, they come inside to, to like to see that guy. You know the lights are all off and stuff. It's like were they just playing that for like ten hours uh, or something but around stopped. the clock? Oh, man, no, it's it's, break. it's it's turning off all the lights. So you're sensory deprived, but you can't sleep because there's just nothing. But just this horrific loud noise in the background. And if you do, if you do end up falling asleep, the guards in there whack you. You're gonna trip. No, you're gonna, you know? yeah, that yeah, that, that probably. That, but like, yeah. if you do end up falling asleep, you're gonna trip balls because of the the sound. Mm. Your brain is still working because you're getting sound, like a lot of sound. You're gonna trip balls, right. and you're gonna. It's terrifying. But like, uh, yeah. And they use that so. against you, like they showed in the film. It's like, well, you're not going to remember that you didn't break, so we'll tell you that you broke, and then, you know, you turn everything against you. But it's insane. Um, one of the things that I remember was, so in Islamic countries, on in most rooms there's a symbol, I do not know the name of it, that points towards Mecca, so that when you have to pray, you can, you know, pray towards Mecca five times a day. So... What they would do in these cells is they would put them in different parts of the room, or they put two of them or three of them, and none of them would point in the right direction. So there was a but, bunch of different ways that they would try to get at these, you know. Where, where did you read this, or who did you hear that from? <laughs> this is from my friend who was basically started Camp X Ray. So, okay. All right. All of the people that were basically taken, um, they were. I think it was in Kandahar they were originally interred and then they were sent to a place that was not in the US but where they could keep them and interrogate them so a lot of black sites like they showed you know like in Gdansk and things but most of them did end up in Guantanamo because it was close to the US but it wasn't US soil so different jurisdictions and stuff and over time it originally was basically a barbed wire camp that turned into this bigger facility and it's funny because even the other day I heard that Biden turned down something for some of the 9-11 backers that are still there. So anyway, you know, half the film just deals with this intelligence gathering, how hard it was and how pushing people to certain limits, you get bad intelligence, you know? So. Yeah. And when you're, when you're told to get the person, you will go to any extent to do that because that's what gets your fucking evaluation report looking better. And they get the wrong guy. And they raid the fucking compound based on this one guy. Human error. Mm hmm. As it all comes down to human error, which is funny. Enigma was broken from human error. Japanese naval codes in the Second World War were broken through human error mostly. Yeah. So eventually, you know, people break. Yeah. Yeah, they they try to show that in the first part of the film with the torture and everything like that. And waterboarding is not waterboarding if you use diesel. I mean, that's just oh. why the fuck did they figure that out? But God, <laughs> God, that's horrid. Let's use bleach at that point. Ugh. No, some some friends and I got got fucking hammered back in the day after we were we were, we were back in country and everything. This wasn't in Iraq. And uh, we were like, well, how bad can it be? Oh, it's fucking terrible. Uh, it's terrible. It's, oh, yeah. Tried it's it? absolutely fucking awful. Um, it's, I, 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 it was, I was hammered drunk, numb, didn't feel anything. And I was like, I'm, I'm fucking dying. And so, yeah, it's, it's definitely torture. Like, yeah. It's, oh, it's like, not torture. It's just a method of interrogation. No, it's fucking torture. And, <laughs> Yeah, it's not good. And I don't I, I don't believe in torture. I, I think that's fucking bullshit. The, so. um, the the you know, the the thing is I will say talking about the film, I guess. I, I do agree with your with your uh comment, Mike, about it being slow. It is slow. Uh but but it's but it's different kind of slow. It's not um 
You have to. I think I know. I think what you're going to say is like you have to pay attention to it because then it makes sense. Yes. Versus if it's slow and it just is like irrelevant, kind of like there will be blood, right? There's a few things that you have to pay attention to. Yes. But you don't really have to pay attention to the whole slow shit. But this one, you have to pay attention to it because then it's like, okay, what led up to this? Why is this happening? And then bam. Right. If you if you if you get bored and you look at your phone. Or you or you or you go and multitask. It's not a movie you can multitask to, you know, no. in that sense. It's like nope. you gotta you gotta really sit down and you gotta focus on it. Um, which is why I say I do agree with you that it is slow, but I don't agree with it or I what I'm thinking in my head, it's like, yes, it's slow, but it's not abysmally, abysmally slow. Like you said, it it it, it require it allows you to go and I feel like it is a slow burn all the way through from start to finish. I do. I was never bored with how slow it was. Um, oh, and I was. That's the thing. I and was. See, and and that's, I, I points, think that's our yeah. difference is that I wasn't bored. I just was. But I do agree it was slow. Um, it was. I think. I think yeah. again. I think if they would have cut it down just half of the length, they still could have uh, uh, communicated the same things that were relevant to why and how this happened without the dross. And I think there was so much dross in there and it was so fucking like, I find it boring. Like if you guys didn't like, that's fine. Like, cause I, I Michael, I, like I think there's a lot of political drama that makes it really slow that you could probably cut out in that. Sure. Sense. So Michael yeah. explain. So you said you liked the first half better than the second half. I, um, I liked some of the, the whole stuff about, you know, like, uh, again, like the, I don't know. I, I always have a thing like I love I have a thing where I love if like people who are become obsessed with stuff, you know, like that's what the movie uh, Zodiac mm-hmm. is all about. Um, and it's like I find that really interesting where it's like there's this little thing that no one else is really prodding at, but one person decides yeah. to do it. And that sort of thing was really interesting sure. to me. Um, so that that sort of aspect of it, just personal preference. I like a lot when it comes to uh, a and so how, how did they how did they how did they you accomplish know, I, that? in your opinion, in this film, like for the, yeah. Well, because no one seemed to, because eventually like even her boss is like, you know, there's, there's going to be another guy. There's going to, he, she's just like dead set on this one thing. And, um, everyone else is like, what's the importance of this? You know, why it's just going to, you know, it's like, you know, clipping your fingernails. We're just going to grow back kind of. And, um, but no, she's like stuck on this one thing and to the point where she like, you know, might not even understand why, but, um, I don't know. I just, me personally thought that was, that was interesting. I also kind of like how when she's first introduced, like with what's his name, uh, um, Jason Clark, when he's like doing his torture stuff that like, you can tell she's really like, uh, turned off by it all. And then, uh, as time goes on, she kind of starts to not, you know, she just just gets kind of used to it. You know, I kind of like, right. Yeah. I kind of like that because it kind of almost set it up like, She's going to say, like, no, this is wrong or something, Correct. but that You're doesn't right. happen, yeah. which yep. I like. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, that sort of stuff was interesting to me. Um, when it came to the second half, the actual, like, raid itself, I liked how um, j- how just, you know, stripped of the Hollywoodism it, it was. How there was a bit of it in there, but like, continue. No music. Yeah, there was like no, 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 no music no, just, or anything. Just go ahead. I'm like, sorry. I just wanted to make the little point because then it's a conversation that I want to have after your statement, if that's good. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that part of it that I liked where it was like there'd just be these moments of silence and then, you know, you just, you know, yeah. And then they're yep. shooting and stuff like that. And it's like, and then you hear like, oh, oh, you know, like someone just go down. I liked that, um, how they, they really tried to do that very realistically. You know, they, they did not want to. Hollywood that part I, I will, of it up, I will say you know? um the one thing I did really like about the whole entire shot placement is that you don't they don't ever put a, a emphasis or they don't really even have the camera in focus barely at all of the guy he's playing Osama yeah at all yeah you don't is, ever really I, see I him yeah and, yep. you know that you see it through like the camera a little bit but it's so far away on a two, 2012 the, the themes that i took away from this that i latched on to were the whole were like obsessions so you like when, the, you like the uh, more you know, and, and like, like the kind of human like the intensive like i'm not fucking quitting yeah. i'm not giving up on this even though it's completely fucked yeah. it seems like it's completely fucked nope 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 
Yeah. I always like, I'm a sucker for that yeah. kind of thing. No, that, so yeah, that's a, it's fair because that was a part that I didn't necessarily enjoy, but that's fine because that's why mm-hmm. art exists. Right. You know? Um, mm-hmm. so with the Hollywoodisms, cause I was talking to my buddy, Chris, that we've had on the podcast before with Jadotville and everything. Um, I was talking to him today a little bit and he was like, what do you think about the actual, like the raid scene scenes rather? And, uh, I said, once I saw them, I was like, they're really fucking, really fucking good. Like really fucking good. Mm-hmm. And I, I, can, uh, Jamie or, or Nathan, can you look this up? <laughs> Can you, uh, Jamie, look it up. Can you yeah, look up? I'm up? pretty sure they had some like prior service Navy SEALs. I'm pretty acting. sure they had the guy. Can you just look it up while I'm, there, I'm going on? I will. Way. I will. I'm, yeah, I'm going to find it. I just... So because the way they moved and the way they operated and communicated were really good, like really good. And there was a few things. There's a few times we could tell that they were instructed by the director to say like, I'm doing this or. We need a breach charge, you know, this and that. In real life, SEALs, they don't fucking speak on, on a fucking mm. uh, op. Like, they just, they just, like they were doing in this film. They had hand signals. They do this, they do that, whatever the fuck they do. I'm not a SEAL. It never was. And, like, but I've met a lot of SEALs, and, you know, we talk, and, like, they go, and we do it in the infantry to an extent, but there's a lot of yelling. Like, they say once the fire starts, you start yelling. But still, even after that, you still do hand signals. But, like, these guys train so fucking close, so hard together on so many possible different scenarios and everything. They don't need to speak at all. At all. They don't need to yell out, breaching door. Oh, this room's clear. No. They'll know because either hand signals or they'll just know but body language. Or, like, you know, if the guy's not swinging his fucking rifle here and shooting... The room is probably clear as I get in there. And so the, the, the guys who portrayed the SEALs, I know Chris Pratt was in there, and he actually did a pretty good job. Um, but uh, those guys did a really great job at uh, at um, doing this, yeah. So, yeah, let, let's just yeah pull this up. Yeah. What I love about the raid is the, the, the length. It's like a good it's 20 short. minutes. But it's very long, though, for the duration of the film, which yeah, is it, great. It, it's, it's very short, but it's very long. Exactly. And there's not always shooting going on. I like that a lot. As there should be, yeah. It's yeah. very realistic as far as No Easy Day is concerned. Um, and from what I know about the raid as well. <laughs> it's great, too, when they're on the helicopter. And, and the guy's like, uh, okay, who here has been in a helicopter crash? They all raise their hands. <laughs> it's one yeah. of the most common oh, things fuck. in the SF community. Yeah. Yep. You know? Yep. I mean, at least twice a month you hear about an Osprey crash. Those things fall. Well, those are fucking terrible. But um, yeah, so yeah, they're they're coming in now. They're getting their gear ready. They got their fucking nods on. The switch between the nods and the nighttime vision is a bit of a juxtaposition, but it's done really well throughout the whole raid. Like it's not it's jarring, but it's enough jarring. You know? Like, yeah. Well, and it's it's, it's very it's, well done. I I actually thought like because I was I was like kind of bored, like I said, with the film, like in general with the political shit. But like when this came on, I was like, this is shot very fucking well. Well, it's like, this is hurt lockers director. What the fuck? I know. Like, yep. this yeah. Like how? why didn't you do this the first yeah, time? Why, why didn't yeah. you do this? Yeah, I feel like the yeah. hurt lockers problems is, it was the cinematographer, not the director. Mm. Oh, I was, it, it and, was and, shots and, like also, oh, and also this is the 2008 style of directing is completely different at this point past the tens. Because think about more it. Cowbell? What what what's what's the most popular movies of the time? Uh Jason Bourne. Um yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck, yeah. all the other things that are like that, yeah. where they're all zoomed in close, like it's that same type of thing. All right, so right now we're watching like the uh the, the birds actually landing and the guy's getting off on the first um chalk actually. Because the second the other- one's got some problems. But yeah, like, the other helicopter crashed because there's this crazy thing where when there's a certain percentage of moisture in the air, the humidity cannot sustain lift, and they were so close to the buildings that they basically fed out of the air and they weren't able to power out of it. It's a problem that happens very rarely, but in most They also up armored the fuck out of these helicopters and did not test them ever, and that was a huge problem. So They were bolt-on stealth kits that they brought from the States. Yes, and they did not test them. This was the test run. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh shit, 
They worked great, and except luck- for... Yeah. Luckily, more seals didn't die in this crash. Thank God. But they died later, which is funny. Kind of a I don't think anybody died thing. in the raid, <laughs> which is funny. What? There was there, nobody died in the raid. I think no, no, no. But they, oh, dude, you didn't hear about the Chinook, the, the shit hook that went down about six months well, after this or nine months after oh, this? Oh, that, that's a different operation. That had like most yeah. of the fucking members that actually were involved with this raid yeah, that went down well, mysteriously operation, and died. Operation Red Wings. The fucking whole Chinook went down too trying to rescue those dudes. Happens. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was just very suspicious. But uh, anyway, yeah, so they're coming out with their nods. They got their suppressors on. They got their 14 and a half inch fucking, you know, barrels, their M4s and shit. And they're actually, this is how these guys move. Like, it's fucking awesome to see these guys in action. It's fucking amazing. Um, because I, I have your advisor, by the way. Cool. Let's talk about that in a second. Okay. Um, but yeah, oh, the nod shots, too, are actually really good. Because well, it shows how the they're fucking, all spliced is so well done. Yeah, the PEC-14, like the fucking uh, the infrared laser, that's what you're seeing um, on there. Because right now you can't see them, but the PEC-14 infrared laser is like, you when, you when you have nods on, you can fucking see all of them. And it's annoying. But like, it's where you're aiming your weapon. And they, they did this whole fucking series pretty fucking well. In my opinion, like they were, yeah, because the biggest the is, worry on this raid was that after it, that they would have to fight their way out from the Pakistan military. They were all carrying about a thousand rounds of ammunition, if I remember correctly. Their backpacks were full of yeah. water and, and food because they literally were ready to fucking fight their way out of the city if they had to. Yeah. So when they got out of the helicopter, they're loaded the fuck down for not just oh, the they've fight, got at the least fight they've got at least one hundred and eighty pounds of shit on them. I guarantee fucking oh, see you mm-hmm. easily, and. These guys the are in really thing good too, shape, but still, it's gonna fuck you up, you know. From um, no easy day is that there was the back of the uh, helicopters. It was just a cargo bay, so they didn't have anything. So the more experienced guys, they brought like fucking chairs, like fold out chairs and shit. So. <laughs> yeah, they, like beach chairs. And they were, what yeah. the fuck? They're like, God, oh, two deployments, man. I know what the fuck I'm doing. Gonna, have, gonna be gonna be comfortable. <laughs> Some guys yeah. with a fucking you know Pakistan and a beach chair from Walmart. Yeah, and so, yeah, these guys are sitting there, and he's he, he's dropping a breach charge right now, which we never did, but we learned about, like, the guys that did it and how to do it if we needed to, but we never had to do that, which was good. And, yeah, second How quiet is, the helicopter is, too. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, they're very fucking loud in real life. But the I kit know, that they I, had, I, though. I, I know they installed the kit, Brian, but, like, that fucking thing, you're going to hear it. It's a fucking helicopter. The engine well, itself there was a Chinook hear. about 30 miles off station. I believe, with the whole platoon of guys, or half platoon, or whatever it was. There was what? There was a, a Chinook about 30 miles away it was for the mic force. It was ready to go. Oh, really but, quick. Oh, the, this wasn't the scene, but, like, the next scene, like, they... Oh, no, this... Oh, he tears the door off. Or in one scene, they say, bad breach, get the fuck back. That's one of them actually was a fa- It was a false his- door. That was true. One of the right. teams that was on the exterior of the perimeter that couldn't get in, they found the door and they tried to blow it, but it was just a fake door. No, so but here's the thing is like, way. yeah, that might be like, when you say bad breach, get back. All right, everybody's back. You're like, oh, fuck. Pull security they dropped, immediately. They drop one team outside the compound that was going to circle around to the front and the other yeah. team was going to go onto the top of the, the building, the third story building and rappel onto it and go in. But that's I, when they faced the whole problem and crashed into the exterior wall. The I also the love how they're like in this scene, this guy's um, he's preparing a charge, but he's also like he checked for fucking. Yep. Okay. And then he's getting shot at through the door, drops the shit There's and then starts two- fucking firing. There's two real sequences of combat in this. There's the raid, and then there's that like terrorist attack that they show in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And yeah. the run in Saudi Arabia, you can clearly tell, is blanks, and it doesn't sound good. And it's shot, whatever. I mean, it's horrible, but it's it's good for what it is. This, though, the gunplay is a completely different level because the gun it's, sounds well, are so well done. And again, and that, that's the thing is, like, that's why I think these guys. Hey, can you pause it, Brian? Because like, this is going to be re- relevant. Um, pause One it for second. a second. All right, so Nate, the advisors and everything, how, how did that go? Uh, there, well, the only one that came up really was a guy named Mitchell Hill, or sorry, Mitchell Hall, uh, and he was a, uh, a, uh, uh, oh, shit, what was he? 
I had it up. Sorry, I accidentally closed. Because these guys, um, there's no way they could have just been trained or like their advisor would have been able to do that thing unless they were actually like operators. Sorry, he was uh he was a, a U.S. Navy SEAL. Okay. And uh, that was yeah. So he's a technical advisor. So he trained he trained all these actors. I don't know if he trained the actors. He just says it says he's a technical advisor on the film. And worked on training the the yeah I think he was training these guys. He's worked on Call of Duty. He's worked on uh, a bunch of other similar things. But I'm gonna call bullshit on that. He was able to train all those guys to move. I and don't execute I, I, anyway. I'm just saying. No 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 I, no. I'm not, I'm not saying anything against him. I'm just like. These guys, okay. like... I'm just saying, I don't have the information to tell you. I'm just saying... These guys all look like prior military. Like, they're... Because here... Okay, pause it, Brian. All right. That's one thing I'm going to talk about is... So, according to the Geneva Conventions, if you pass a possible EPW or enemy prisoner of war, and then you turn around and shoot them, that's not good. However, if you're walking up to them and they're on the ground like this guy was, right which these two guys come in here and you fucking lay rounds into them. That's not a problem. Again, justifying and like proving what they did. What that, that's another thing, but like, that's the training that we got too as infantrymen is like, if you're walking up to someone and they're still moving and you want them dead, no problems. If you pass them and then you turn around and they're still alive, you have to treat them and then you have to fucking, you know, do all this shit. That's why these guys are just fucking putting rounds into guys as they're walking up to them. It's like, that was a threat. He just fucking shot at me. He has a fucking gun. And so I want him completely out of the fight so I can move on. And that's a really good detail that I don't think I've seen in any other film, really. That's what makes this part of the film or the film in general, I mean, just so well done because it's clean cut, the combat, you know? It's- yeah. A, a, a kind of similar story and it's not twins don't worry is um so a, f- a friend of mine he was a blank fire reactor for a really long period of time and i finally convinced him to go to a like a blank fire airsoft one so you get the best of both worlds you get something coming at you you get hit by but you also get the sounds and we got into a firefight that lasted probably i don't know that blank fire reenacting would last about 15 minutes and in this lasted two minutes and he was like wow, that didn't last any, wow, that, that was so quick. And it's like, yeah, eventually you're going to hit someone. <laughs> like It doesn't take long when you're shooting to hit people. So that being said, you know, this is so well done because of how clean it is. You know, it's a breach. It's one guy. It's two very well-trained special forces dudes. And that's it. It's They train, train, train for this situation for years. So when they're in it, they do it and they're through, you know. It's not shoot them up, bang, bang, oh my, there's a whole fucking thing. It's how it really happened, by the way, and it's depicted so well. So, yeah, it's just, it's so clean, it's so good, and it's so hard to, to not watch this. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's, cool. That's, that's, that's about, that's about Mike, Michael and I's extent of knowledge on this subject. It's, it's cool. It's, it's cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's why we're letting you guys go at it <laughs> i approve i approve the four-way night vision was cool well we did a whole display at our museum in 2012 2013 about this we did a crazy research and everything and it's trying to get the impressions right and mm. very interesting we built a whole model of the compound and everything who played saddam you saddam <laughs> osama it's the other one michael <laughs> No, I meant Saddam, damn you. <laughs> Love the AR-01 camouflage, too. What I like, and I remember this from Generation Kill, is that when they show that night vision stuff, you see everyone's, uh, everyone's, um, you know, laser sight. The infrared la- yeah, it's an infrared laser. It's, uh, well, you could have PEC 2s, which they don't have. They have PEC 14s, like the fucking smaller ones. Mm. Um, but yeah, but like, you don't see anything. It's a really interesting storytelling device to where, like, you see someone under that night vision, and you'll you'll see all of those lasers like go onto one thing. You know. Oh, like she you... was reaching for the gun. Yeah. Okay. And so that shit does happen and has happened, and it sucks. 
exactly as this is depicted is exactly as again according to how it occurred to Noisy Day, which yeah. is the the current best memoir on the subject. And as as you guys were just saying, I did think it was interesting that every time someone gets hit, they go up and they shoot them again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that's the thing is like, um, honest to God, we were trained that way. Like as you're walking up to somebody, mm-hmm. you pop a few fucking rounds into them before you cross the boundary. Again, there's no way to prove that unless you're whatever. It was really retarded. Crazy because like, I. Rem- I remember, sorry not to cut you off, but I remember reading about this and hearing about it and then seeing it, this next scene on the stairwell, when he calls out his name Khalid. Because we had no idea that they were going to depict a raid like as crazy as it was. And then it was like, oh, fuck, this is, they're doing it scene by scene, you know? It's not like the newspaper, Bin Laden's been killed. But also, do we, operating like this with those nods and operating with that, 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 fucking fine razor sharp fucking as much as they could like um 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 precision very fucking difficult and now they're flipping lights on that's not good because your night vision is going to be fucked it's not going to be like you need it off but it's not going to be good when you have it on and i mean operating weapons in general with night vision is absolutely fucking nightmarish it's terrible it's so fucking hard and these guys have trained with it, but it's still like now you're actually in a combat zone where you're probably going to have lead thrown at you. And that's why they're taking it off right now. And I like that detail. We're only 15 minutes into the raid, too. <laughs> like We're not um, even at Vin- we're on the first floor of the compound still, you know? You know, the, the, the night vision, the nods, uh, it's one thing I've always wondered about, like, what it's what it's like to wear that sort of thing. Because uh, they get heavy after a while. <laughs> oh, I'm so sure. They, they've got... They've, so they've got um, the fucking, uh, the newer model that we, it was one model after, like, when I got out. Uh, they had the PVS fucking whatever's, like, most guys have them now. We had PVS 14s, it was a monocular. So it was on our, it was on your, uh, your non-dominant eye, right? Okay. And so you could still fire if you had a flash or, like, a light turned on like that. And you could still fucking have your night vision in one eye. The PVS 7s were the binoculars, and they were fucking shitty. Very low fucking visibility. Like, even with the PBS-14s, we could see about, I don't know, 75 yards out. Like, really well. And then you could qualify, because we had to qualify with them on rifle. But it it also, your depth perception is so fucking off when you're wearing those, because they're actually magnified a little bit. And so, that's another thing you have to factor in. Even with these things that they're wearing, I can't remember the fucking... Nate, can you Google Google that really quick and see yeah. what model they're like the the four? Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. remember the. I know what you're talking. About. I can't I, I, it's yeah, like I, I just can't remember the fucking yeah. nomenclature. But like even with those, it's so fucking difficult, especially if you're doing mount like this, to fucking have depth perception and well, not I remember running into that, walls uh, and shit. I yeah. remember that from, again from Generation Kill. One of the main characters, like when they're driving, he has to wear those on those on his face when he's driving. And yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I can't tell what's a ditch and what's a berm, you know? Exactly. You, because yeah, like it, it, it's really bad. Like even walking like through the woods and shit at night, you, it's like, okay, you have to kind of tell. That's why I actually like the PBS 14s because it was a monocular and it wasn't both my eyes. So I could just close my eye with the night vision on and then like, look and be like, Oh, okay, so there, there's a fucking huge log here or some shit that I'm going to trip over. And it's right here. It's not way in front of me like the night vision says. Talking about the GPNVG? Probably. The ground panor- panoramic night vision goggles? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, okay. That's I never used them. I never, I never experienced them. But, like, those came right as I was getting out. They were starting to get these things. Yeah, because I remember I the ne- mono, yeah. like you said. That's what I yeah, remember the my yep. friends having in the military at that time. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, and so, it's like... Go ahead, Brian. They knew that, you know, the local population would get stirred up and kind of want to know what's going on. And there's this funny part of No Easy Day where I think a lot of service members can uh, relate to this. They call it, you know, when there's too much time on your hands, the no, or what is it, the uh, the good idea fairy shows up. The stupid idea that, you know, why are you putting time in this for no reason that some fresh lieutenant thinks of. So one of the ideas that came up, they're like, well, they noticed that there was a car or parked like near the compound. And they're like, well, we could push the car into the middle of the road and put like a light on top so that we can, you know, 
stop you know people from coming close like oh it's a police like drug operation or something and there was this whole week-long research like event into well what color red or light should we use for the car and everything and you know it just goes to show how like the rabbit holes you go down towards when you're going towards an operation or something and the stupid ideas that crop up that some people think is, are worth putting into but for this whole segment you know where they're like trying to stop people from coming up to you like you know they put a lot of thought into how should we do this and at the end of the day it was just Getting yelled at in English. Step the fuck back. <laughs> no, tell him to get the fuck back. Yeah. Yeah, the angles are great too. Stairway. And yeah, the, the, this whole like it's just the, shot the sequences, so, yep. yeah, mm -hmm. really good. Khalid, bam. Oh. See, like that just. And you know, it's it not an overreaction weird. either. It's like he gets shot and he falls. He's yep. done. The sound. He's fucking down. The sound is great. Yep, because it's a suppressor. It's not a. Well, they're they're labeled as silencers, but like, yeah, it, you're still gonna hear it. It's still gonna make your ears ring. Well, what's nice too is that you're not getting the movie uh, suppressor sound effect. No, nope. you know, it's, it sounds like the real thing, like movie exactly. sound effects. Suppressor Absolutely, sound, sound like or like, <laughs> it's like. It doesn't sound like no, that. No, it's like yeah. that, that. That's what I was like when I was watching this. I'm like, oh, that's a suppressed firearm. Mm -hmm. It's a suppressed rifle. Oh, we shit, found all, yeah, we found all the porn. I was gonna comment on that. Like they took all the, <laughs> the, the 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 hard drives and the computers, and it's like it was a windfall. Yeah, apparently it was. They a found a lot of porn. A lot of the porn in there. And like the, oh, these really? kind of angles that they're yeah. doing right yeah. now, where they're showing like when they're going into different rooms with the nods, and like aiming at each other, and then they immediately realize that, and they're like, okay, down. That's fucking awesome the way they shot that. Again, the person that made the Hurt Locker made this. How? Like, good on you. We probably have better advisors. Like, I know Nate can't find it because it's probably really hard. Yeah, oh, you get the PEC-2 fucking, or the PEC-14 uh, the, on there. The, well, the, well, the one thing I was going to say was um, uh, that, that guy who was just up, uh, he's the, he he kind of looks, I, I, you know, he plays kind of like a pack, a guy who knows a, a bunch of, yeah, 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 you know. Yep, yep. Uh, but he's got a giant nose. It's that guy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He, it's so funny. Cause the thing I know him from is a video game called the, uh, a way out and it's a co-op oh. game and that's him. And he plays that Brooklyn guy with the giant nose and mm -hmm. it's him in the video game. And so I can only picture him having like a Brooklyn kind of like accent. And yeah, he's here playing, yeah. like, you know, not having that. And I was, like, laughing. To he did a really life. fucking good job, too. Yeah, like, yeah. No, he did a really good job. I did not know he was in this. There's a lot of really good actors in this movie. Um, I'll just say it real quickly. Um, Joel, Joel Egerton's awesome. Um, the the guy with the giant nose, I liked him. Um, he's a very limited actor right now, but he's getting more and more stuff. You know, Chris Pratt, obviously the big names in that movie, and a bunch of old, older actor, a lot of older, act, older actor B movie uh, actors in this. Um, there's also that guy who's got kind of like the, the I think he, I think it's an injury, but he's got a little bit of like a lazy eye, as well. He's in this movie a lot. Forrest anyway. Whitaker. No, <laughs> <laughs> I know if Forrest Whitaker was in this. Jesus, <laughs> he plays Bin Laden. What the fuck? <laughs> oh God. Oh boy. That's why you can't see him too well. A uh, deed in fucking you know uh, Black Hawk Down maybe, but like yeah. So, um, but no. So what's interesting is I'm looking at I'm looking at this still right now. Is like he's got an EOTech on there. And he's got a Peck two on or a Peck uh, uh, Peck fourteen on top. And he's got backup iron sights on there. Now, the way he's got his rifle configured right now, his backup iron sights are useless. He can't no, fucking they, use them. They'd go high enough over the peck. No, they yeah, fucking wouldn't. Yeah, they make high enough ones. That's not a high enough one. That's They totally make high enough ones. Okay, Brian. And they made them no. at this time. Oh, boy. Uh, I made these, I've made these rifles before for okay, exhibits. Okay, cool. So... Oh, yeah. They also during the raid, some of the guys had the off uh, center ones, forty five degree ones as well. Mm -hmm. so. Well, this is this is this is two thousand whatever the fuck eleven. I know his backup iron sight is Magpul Mo, right? That's not gonna fucking clear the fucking pack two or pack fourteen, and the and even the EOTech, and also he doesn't have a front sight but post. It looks like so he probably has a pop up one. Okay, so I. Uh, <coughs> I 
Uh, you'll you'll see it later. No, no, no. I just I looked up on. I just went to IMFTP right now. Just to... no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the raid's really well done. It definitely, you know, it, you think the the movie's a little slow and boring. It's keep watching it because it picks up real quick and it's totally worth your time. Um, before we get into IMFTB, there's a few things that I just wanted to talk about really quickly. Sure. Um, first off. That amazingly intricate arrest. Um, I think they're in Saudi Arabia or Kuwait or whatever, but where like the guy meets in the park and it's like all the, the agents. Oh, or, or maybe, oh. uh, maybe, maybe, sorry, it isn't Pakistan. Like the it is, Yeah, it's agent. Pakistan. That was a yeah, coup. Yeah. And, and all the guys like fucking show up. Like that was pretty, mm-hmm. uh, so intricate. That was very interesting. Very um, Middle Eastern, very you know part yeah. of the course well it, yeah. it's like this it's just like you know oh it's an investigation you know we're going what's going on and that happens it's like what what okay i you know i've seen this movie i guess mentioned earlier like probably three times and for the first time when i watched this time i saw a kind of correlation maybe i'm crazy but between the messages in the beginning of the film like the phone calls on 9 11 and the aim messages that um they're getting yeah. during the whole you know uh ambush sequence I, I should say you know like with the whole double agent um that i didn't really realize before but you know like watching an event from afar and being influenced by it yet wanting to be there and everything and i thought that was very powerful and poignant and it kind of like you know they really reflect each other and kind of the arcs of the film um also dates, it, again it just, also dates the technology so. Yes. I know, right? ASL? Who the fuck you know, uses like, AIM? <laughs> I was about to say, ASL? isn't AIM what? dead? Like, yeah. This is, yeah, that's long dead. But, this, but, but 2010, 2011, 2012, it's still going on hard, and companies and apparently the government are using it. This so. was 07, 08 when that happened. I yeah, think. that was definitely so, going hard. Then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then yes, yes, absolutely. Yep. What does AIM stand for, Nathan? Instant messaging. And what What's A stand for? Asshole. I think, I, saying, I think it's America Online. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Asinine yeah. instant, instant messaging. American yeah. Online. Oh, do they? AOL. ASL. Which? So what does MSN Messenger is made, stand for? Which nothing has made me more fucking old feeling than someone saying the dial-up ASL. tone is the uh, is the is the uh, someone it was the Zoomers described as like the 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 slow meme or whatever. Like, they don't know it as a dial-up. They know it as, like, what's a meme on the internet. And that made nothing has made me ever feel so fucking They didn't know that life. was, like, a real thing? No. They oh. thought it was, like, a meme, like, like the, like, the, I, I think you this kidding? Was, like, the slow <laughs> meme or what. Yeah. They were, like, they were, yeah. They were, like. <laughs> really? Yeah. They had no idea oh, that I, was even a thing. I remember the shit out of that, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Welcome. Low, you got low. mail. Yeah. Wait till we tell them about fax machines. Yeah. I was gonna say, how else are you going to load up Dude. a so Brian, 20, Brian. Two, 240 by 240 picture of tits in 15 minutes? Okay. Well, <laughs> the, the dare you go. <laughs> Thank you for fucking saying that. Anyway. Because that's exactly yeah. what happened. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're almost to the nip. Pam Anderson on the beach with sandy tits. Yeah. Definitely, definitely took like a half an hour to download that fucking thing. Yeah, the internet printed, fails I right print, as it gets to the tits. Yeah, yeah, and I printed that. Mom walks in right when it gets to the chest level, and then zoom, you can't zoom, stop zoom. it. Oh no, 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 no! They they found they found that with a pack of cigarettes, half smoked, <laughs> in in a drawer that I had had, and they were like cleaning out some shit. They were gonna move some stuff. They found that picture that I printed out on their printer. <laughs> Of Pam Anderson. That's a lot. Know, of Pam Anderson, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Pam Anderson. She's hot as fuck, man. Sounds like a short. Well, this is before the the tape, so that would have been o- before o four. Right? Oh no, no, it was before Dude. the second tape with, with Tommy? fucking uh, uh, Tommy Lee. Yeah. This is after the Brett Michaels tape. Before the Tommy Lee tape. Before the before the boat. Have tape. you watched that TV show? By the way, have you watched Have you watched that TV show? It's of course. Really watch that, oh, dude. dude, dude, Winter Soldier. He's fucking good in that. <laughs> He's really fucking good. So in anyway, that. my parents anyway, caught me. They caught me with a fucking, the, the very many times folded over and like <laughs> crease, like picture of Pam Anderson on the beach with her tits and a half pack of cigarettes. Oh my God. Marble dude. Reds. A soft pack, by the way, soft pack. So I'm not that fucking bad. <laughs> a soft pack of Marble Reds. And they were like, um, you're dead. 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I was like, it, there was punishment for that. It was just I don't know, I'm getting insane. you for you, for Christmas. <laughs> what? A, a, a fucking... A, a half thing of marble or reds and a very stained and folded Pamela Anderson. Yeah, I'll print it off, yeah. you know, not on the inkjet one, on the old school ones with the cartridges, you know. No, it was, yeah, it was a cartridge printer. It was a cartridge yeah. one, yeah. Because my I parents print... are both gone, and I was like, I spent all day You're printing running out the of fucking thing. <laughs> I, had a, I had a few uh, images of, yeah, w- w- printed out under my bed. So Skin yeah, was always them. magenta, Brian. I'm glad you brought that up, actually. That's <laughs> what you always print, yeah. I printed a lot of photos, man. I would love it when you'd get like to one part and then like it would start to run out of a color, so then it would be like a magenta. Tint yeah, like or a something. stripe. Yeah, yeah like yeah, a fucking yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, it was it was it was amazing. And then like they found the it, and I'm like, pain. and I'm like, that's all you guys just found it. And it's gone. <laughs> oh God, you know, Gotta print out another one. Meanwhile, right, kids these days have it on their phones instantly. I uh, 4K. I I went to the Gap once, which was this big reenactment, and I probably was like, oh, not the 14. clothes store, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, <it was> Fort, <laughs> in, Fort India Town Gap, and it was this big reenactment they did for like thirty years in uh, Pennsylvania. Long story short, um, there was this guy there, and there was a bunch of New York City cops there in a unit, and this guy looked at me once and he goes, "Fucking you, you don't know they fucking ruined jacking off." I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, you have no fuck. You got that fucking shit on your phone. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, you fucking go to the nudie store. You buy the magazine. You see the photos, but you're at work. You can't fucking be a deviant. (laughs) You're thinking about it. You go to, oh, you're on your lunch break or you look at the photos. You're thinking about it. Oh, it's like a fucking date. I'm going to see you. Going to get some fucking mac and cheese. Go home. Fucking bada boom. Fucking no! What do you kids have today? Oh, look at my phone. Yeah, of all, no of, fucking action. Of all action. the things you had to say was mac and cheese on that topic. God damn it, Ryan. <laughs> oh, yeah. It yeah. was it was really funny, but it's like he's got a point, you know. It's like but then no and then and then we'll move it we'll move it on. Up. But then you have the generation before him going. All I had was Natural Geographic. <laughs> <You know? laughs> natural Geographic yeah. illustrations of topless Neanderthals. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was before the fucking era of a fucking airstrip, so they had to cut their way to fucking pussy. <laughs> Nat <laughs> Geo tits. My no. grandfather was on Guadalcanal. He taught me this trick with a fucking machete. You gotta be strategic <laughs> no. about that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brian, are you, I, at, I, are you at the points? <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about more jack-off things from the past? You know, I had a, I had something funny to say, but we'll move on. So, on that note, Nathan, would you like to bring us into uh, the Yeah, give me one sec. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, yes, the IMFDB. Okay. Block 17. Block 17. That's the guy from John Wick 4, by the way. Oh, shoot. Scott Adkins? Yeah. That's his name, Adkins. I couldn't remember. Mm. Gen 3, ooh. Red 92. 92s. All common shit you expect to see overseas. Yeah, they mm. all look the same. <laughs> yep. Six T-T-6s. hour. Yep. MP5, A2. Yep. yep. That was an interesting sequence. Yeah. She's like, oh, H-K. this is not just fun and games. Like, really she realized said- it. So they weren't real for uh, 17 or 16s. They were mock-ups. Huh. Which makes sense. Oh, who, who, what advisor is that? Or no, that's a, not an advisor. He, and he's if got a shoot, set in there. It's a pop-up. Yeah, if you shoot an M4 you like that, though, you're that's not that's not well, fucking not, good. Well, they're just doing weapons um, checks. But, yeah, I think he's just weapons yeah. checking. Okay, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Oh, gunplay was so fucking well done. Very well done, yep. I love those over-the-shoulder shots. I mean, I don't know how well that would work with, like, older firearms, to be totally honest. So I think there's one or two of them in, like, Saving Private Ryan when they go into the house at the, towards the end of the movie where um, that Jewish guy gets killed. I think there's an over-the-shoulder up him shot with the Garand. But w- with Nogs and with the laser or the IR sight, you know, it fucking looks so cool. If you do that with that, you can do it with a fucking... Regular right. I I think I just think the effects with the, with I don't know are, are different, but it's pretty cool. You can do it with anything, but it's just very well. It works very well with this. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Set for of sure. you know M four A one. No, they would have had M fours at that point, but semantics. 
Yeah. Well, they could have had an M4A1, but like they didn't start issuing those until like twenty, the, like the mid twenty aughts. So an A2 musket. <laughs> yeah, they're great rifles, though. My God. Oh yeah. No. Th- okay. So is he holding an A2? Yeah. Realistically, honestly, in my opinion, he would have been holding an A4. Well, this was set in two thousand and three or four. This is the very beginning of the film. It's hard to say. I don't know what the oh, RCOs okay. came so, out. Yeah, that, that, yeah, then it could be either or. I think yep. RCOs were like 07, 08. A little bit. A little later. Because that's what they learned from the early Afghanistan. You know, it was like a mid-range long rifle. Yeah. So, yeah, if it's 03 or 04, yeah, it could be either or. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, my bad. Yep. H and K. G36C. Shit. Zastava in 92. Yep. Uh, from the yep. hotel shooting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, mass. Yep. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what I would have There was mm. okay. Let's just keep going down because there's one thing I want to bring up if they don't actually talk about it. Okay. God damn. The fuck. Well, I have some water in Capri Sun and I'm burping now. <laughs> uh, oh, there it is. Uh, okay. Oh, yep. I remember go. that. Yep. Yep, I do remember that. And I was like, if they didn't have it on here, I was gonna be like, eh, I should probably put it on there. Yeah, it's the MD65. Hmm. Um, yep. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Very common too. So favorite AK. Yours. That or an AKMS. Uh, it's just they're very interesting. It was crazy yeah. that a bunch of them ended up in Nam. So go. So the HK four seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The fucking <laughs> wet dream of like every fucking person that watched this. It's like, oh god. You know, I was gonna draw the mail train, but I I never did. Fucking. They always build the clones, and they brag about it on forums, and it fucking sucks. Okay. Mark anyway. 48. Yes. So the Mark... Okay, mm-hmm. so let's go up a bit. Can I see the Mark 48 one more time? What is the difference between that and a saw? I know it's the same platform, but, like, what... Me- 7.62 uh, uh, versus 5.56. Oh, really? I have no idea. Yeah. They're very nice. Oh, oh yeah. really? So it's a fucking yeah. saw that's in 7.62? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're a great shit. segue between a saw and uh MT forty. But God yeah. damn. That would have been a beast <laughs> No, Mark forty eight's Mark forty eight's like, yeah, no, they're 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 good. I would have loved that fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, it's they're very fucking cool. <laughs> it's lighter than a fucking two forty, I'll tell you that much. It's oh, lighter yeah. than a two forty, but it's got the the, the, punch, the ability yeah. to suppress. Yeah, you know. So, and it's a yeah. saw, so it's easy to work. So what on. what is this gun? I've I okay, so let's go through this. I've never seen this before. Um, what is this Nathan, what is this called? I've never seen this gun in the history of my life. So the Browning M two H B heavy machine gun. Ah, uh, yeah. Mount what is this military thing? Humvees? Oh. What? Is that some like Russian thing or <laughs> No, I think it's American. Well, I don't know. Is it German? It's obviously like... Israeli, guys. Come on. Oh, oh. that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Didn't they use this in the Second World War? And um, we're done. <laughs> I think they did. But I don't know. This is real. Anyway. Um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> that's just now become the shtick every single time now. Did Fucking Israel hell. use that? Ugh. Well, All right. okay. I think that it's time to yeah. work our way into final thoughts. <laughs> and for the hell of it, uh, how about you go first, Michael? Yeah, okay. So I think I, I, I want to see this movie again. Uh, I feel like it needs a second viewing to uh, absorb a lot of it. But uh, like I say, I thought a lot of the things were well done in it. I really like the whole, you know, that theme of obsession of trying to, you know, get this one thing that no one else seems to care about. Um and uh and you know the, uh, the 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 long the long process to get to that that point you know and then finally once you get there it's uh you know the, uh, a mixed bag of emotions and um in terms of the uh, our lead character but um 
uh, yeah, like the, uh, the the whole actual raid itself, you know, um, thought it was very well done. But uh, I'll give it probably a 7 out of 10. You just going to do a fucking Bush League, like, fucking no decimal point score? 7.2. There we go. 7.2. Yeah. yeah. You got a 7.2. The so rules... A 7-2, uh, I got 7.2. According right. to the rules appendix to B, only the first score is judged, so it's a seven. But anyway, thank you for your consideration. <laughs> no, no, that, 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 that's perfectly fair. Don't forget but my like, point too, Brian. From here on, well, that, let's, we're, we're doing figure skating scores from here on. I declare. <laughs> okay. We're doing yes. figure skating. We're doing seven two, seven eight, whatever the fuck it is. You gotta have a decimal. What is this? A fucking interest rate? I say. I say <laughs> that score was influenced by Mike B. The original score is a seven. No, no, I agree. I, no, 100%. It's a 7. 100%. It's a 7. But in the future, he wants you to give a decimal, I guess. I can Correct. do that. I can do that. We got to do decimals, man, because there's so many films where I'm like, is it a 6 or is it a 7? Oh, if I could give it a decimal, we're going to do that. And so... there has, According to rule appendix C, there hasn't been any rules on any fraction or decimals or any points you want to use. No, I know, but I'm just saying for I've all been, of us. Well, I've been doing that in a lot of the previous episodes, so yeah. I could give well, this a 12 should, and 11 sixteenths if I wanted to. No, we should get a lot more specific, and no, it's 0 through 10, but you have decimals in between there. One fucking decimal point. That's it. It's 6, it. 8, Damn 7, it. 2. I was, try- was going to run with that. 3, 4, like whoever gives a fuck. It's one decimal point. All said, Michael. So what do you think, Mike B? Yeah, so overall, like... What I was kind of bitching about at the beginning and, like, I was talking about through the whole thing still is true. Like, I just watched it today for the first time. I've never seen it before. Um, and, yeah, I get now, like, when you guys are bringing up, like, you like the political stuff and, like, it kind of made it make more sense, I guess, at the end. I, I felt like, again, I, it could be condensed a little bit. But, like... As far as the uh, action sequences, like when they actually did do the raid, that was really, really cool. And I thought it was very well executed, not only on the uh, the actor's parts, but like the actual uh, cinematographers and the director. Because those shots looked basically like modern combat footage, right? That you would take with a GoPro, but it was done cinematically. And it was really, really well done, especially for 2012, you know? And I really did like that. Um... With that said, the again, I have a short attention span. You guys know this. Everybody knows this is listening. If you've been listening for a while at least, or if you're new, welcome. But um, I think two and a half hours, it could have been condensed into an hour and a half. I really could. I really think it could have been. Um, so with that, I also don't know how well the details were. I know it was memoirs, true stories, and all that shit like that, but we've had conversations about that before. I don't know how actually accurate it was to the actual story, but from what I know at this moment right now, I'm going to give it a um, 7.3, 7.3 out of 10. Uh, so, yeah, so I, 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 again, like, you know, I stay away from this film for all the reasons I say uh, in the, in the beginning. Um, overall, um, you know, I'm not really going to have much to say on this one other than the fact that, you know, I think <clears throat> it is a bit definitely big step up from uh, the director's last film, which was Hurt Locker. I'm sure she did stuff in between, but the major film in the same kind of, you know, realm of stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I was I was very impressed with it again. You know, I thought I was going to be watching Bad Boys 4 because I can't say 3 because 3 was made. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it definitely... Um, it definitely held up. Um, there are a few things that I think, you know, are a bit iffy. I, I do think it, it does, you know, wrap the, you know, I guess patriotic kind of side that I kind of always talk about how I hate that in films and that kind of stuff, like, like major patriotic. I don't mean like yeah. just no, mentioning it doesn't matter, but you know, it's that kind of thing. But, you know, in the end, this is a film about, about a subject matter that as we stayed in the beginning of our generation, that's, I guess, you know, especially our age bracket, uh, very much, you know, 
getting in waking up in elementary the last couple years of elementary school or started a middle school and realizing that our world that we knew has changed um a lot and uh you know i think that is a big um kind of you know this movie in a way is a lot of symbology to that closure does it uraw it a bit yeah but you know it it is it, it's kind of hard not to feel that when you or not to feel like it's closure and or the end of kind of like a, a big step that we all took uh when you watch the beginning and then you see the end and i think you know i, I think it's really well summed up because we've seen other films of that subject go about different ways of the traditional sense and i think this film does stand out in that sense um and i think it does enough to go hey we did some shit but hey look at all this stuff that was in this journey with this and again it's not one for one accounting it's conceptualized based off of facts but you know maybe here and there but i mean you know in terms of what it presents i think it presents a really a really good film um but in the end you know, I, I'm not going to, it's not like a master and commander. It's not anything like that for me. So I think I'm going to give it a, um, I think I'm going to give it like a, like a, uh, I'm going to give it an even seven tonight at Screen Mill Gibson's because I think that's where it, it lands uh, on everything. And again, it, it comes down to taste, what I know and all that kind of stuff and how it's presented. And even though it does lag in the middle and lag in some bits of office drama, I don't think there's anything that need to be cut per se i think it all adds to the story it's just if you like that if you like that genre you'll like that time period it's a good film i think so. decent cool yeah to to build on some of your points um it's hard to go last that's the problem because it always you know, is. a lot of things yeah. have been said and it's like well where do you fill in where do you not fill in i mean it, it's an interesting movie and like i said earlier it's a film really in two parts it's half of it is the investigation and the other half is the rape and you know it does both of them very well for different reasons um you know it doesn't do either of them perfectly but it's a very good movie for what it attempts to do um and not only that you know it it shows how the world changed over the period of time it took to find bin laden and how you know it wasn't this 10-year fight you know like there's the one scene in the film where they're like, if you think that there's some secret cell in the fucking Washington, you're wrong. This is it. You know, this is the Bin Laden team. And how long it took to keep the fires going to, you know, find him eventually. Within a decade of, you know, 9-11. Um, because how many, you know, crazy criminal masterminds or terrorist organization leaders, like, look at Arafat in a way. If you want to say, oh, we should have got him or something. You know, he was around since the 80s, operating in Gaza and stuff. So... It's just, it's very interesting film because it just goes to show all the different sides of it. So, anyway, so the other cool thing about this is that it's just got very interesting cinematography. You know, it's not crazily shot, but it's shot so well, you know, like there's a very good use of light, I think. That's the only trick that I really see in this. And it's throughout the entire film. It's not just like the action scenes or whatever. It's like, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I agree. Throughout the, yeah, exactly. You know, yep. there's really no, it, it's good characters, bad characters. It's just light and dark. And it's a very awesome, very cool effect, you know, throughout the whole thing. And it's just really cool. And lastly, the ending is so well done. Not yes. because... You know, you could say whatever. I think what I'm trying to say. In my opinion, you know, the war in the Middle East was something that affected every American in, in different ways. Some people served and they went over there. Other people watched from far away and we watched, you know, people fall apart. We watched families fall apart. We watched the events on the news. We all know people that were affected by it in some way, shape, or form. And just having her, you know, cry a little bit and then, okay, what's next? It's like, it just kind of puts a cap on that chapter in a very, 
I don't know. It's very symbolic, I think, of the whole thing. And it's you you can talk about it a million different ways of why we got into it. Um and what happened getting out of it, but it's just a very dark, horrible chapter. And it's just the perfect ending to that period or a part of that period. So that being said, I mean, I think it's a very well made story and there's nothing else they could really make that would be better than this. They could tell both sides of it, the investigation and the raid. So that being said, I'm going to give this a nine because there's just nothing else out there that is going to be this good. That's going to tell the story. And like, you can watch this and you can walk away from it. Like that was fucked up, but it happened. And wow, you know, sorority girl to a crazy military guy. They can watch this and walk away with something from it. And that's what I think is most important about it. And it's very well done along the way too. You know, it's like they got fucking yeah. ARR on it in four way night vision and fake at four sixteens. And on top of that, they also have really cool, crazy, niche fucking shit about the investigation. So it's just very, very well done. So that being said, putting all the scores into the calculator that will tell us if Bin Laden actually made it out to Orbora, we get a score of 7.5 out of 10. So very yeah, solid score. Very, yep. very solid. I think it's a 7.9 or something on IM or IMDB. Yeah. So yeah. Were you, are, are we not usually usual. pretty close? Yeah, I say usually we're, we're very close to mm-hmm. what the actual score is on there. So, so. yeah. Yeah, cool. Normally, between the consensus of all four of us, we land pretty close to everything. Yeah, with it, I'm sure like there. I'm points. sure there's. I'm sure there's a few, like, well, hold on. I'm curious, Passchendaele. What did Passion? Oh my God! Yeah, what did pa- Passchendaele was? T- Passchendaele oh, IMDb. God. That was Passchendaele fucking terrible. IMDb has a, too much passion. Oh my! Not enough Dale. A six point four out of ten. We definitely yeah, no. don't. No agree with that <laughs> yeah don't don't agree with that either it's like what yeah but mean? usually like <laughs> when we've, we've done this before like you've looked up the imdb and rotten tomatoes like of the actual like uh viewers not the critics yeah but, like, yeah yeah um we're, we're actually usually within like uh three or four like decimals passchendaele um, has 8.6 thousand reviews on imdb and they're at six point six, what? Like, canadians four. out there that's not bad, actually, for 8.4 thousand. How in the fuck? <laughs> These. Well, they're okay. obviously that... blind, deaf, and dumb, so there you go. <laughs> we're, we're just going to have to agree to agree to disagree with that fucking <laughs> rating from the fucking masses, but like. And I'll defend, I'll defend all of our stances and everything we yeah. talked about, I'll defend everything because it was factual. It's like, it's just fucking retarded. So. Yeah, it's just a very um, it's a good movie. It's very it is it is, is definitely um, it's a lot better than the Hurt Locker for sure. Like I'll I'll say that like the 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 tactics that were used, whoever the advisor was, is a lot better than on the Hurt Locker. Um, and yes, it, again, the whole like the beginning, like the kind of lead up, the office scenes and everything, like the CIA scenes, not my forte. I don't like that. But that's my preference. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It was shot very well. It was uh, performed very well and written, to my knowledge, very well. You know, because they tried to, like, say what went on to lead up to it. So, yeah. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, you want a movie to deliver. You know? Mm -hmm. So, something. Mm -hmm. Some people, that's artistic means. Other people, that's things. If I watch a movie about Bin Laden raid and everything... You know, I want to watch the film about Bin Laden raid and everything leading up to it. And it's like, that's what this is. Like, I'm satisfied. Yeah, correct. I'm correct. fucking, I, I could walk away. I'm not like, what happened to Willard? Did he get out of the jungle? Like, I, I don't need, <laughs> like, I, yeah. I'm like, listen. Yeah, yeah. It, a bad thing happened. It was a really hard slug to get there. Somebody got a fucking Lambo. And then we killed a man. I okay. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Good to go. Like. Bam, bam! Thank you. Like you know, it's it's very satisfying, and it's a, it's just a really good movie, and that's like again at the end of the day, that's what you need. I, you know, Oppenheimer is this like crazy, three hours and forty five second clips, and we can talk about the end of the day, but it's like you know, this is much more satisfying than that because it's like okay, you get what you need, you know, I, what I, you want out of it. I liked um, I, even though even though I gave it like a seven ish, it's just because this isn't my general movie that I like to watch. 
um i liked it overall so it's it's good everyone should yeah give it, was, it, a shot. it wasn't bad it was yeah. it was yeah, it was long but it wasn't bad so that's good you know like if you watch a two and a half hour movie and it's like fucking you just hate the whole thing it fucking sucks but this was like it's yeah like gangs of new york drags <laughs> It does, but it's such a. I, I think it's a good movie. Like it's, it's a good movie. It's but so like, slow. It's, it's like it's like after after uh, mm-hmm. he gets like Leonardo DiCaprio gets like shanked. That's when it gets boring and weird and convoluted. And yeah, it's like, and it's like, but like uh, everything up to that point's great. And it's just like okay, but that's also a really long movie. Also suggest that. Can we technically do yeah, that? Yeah. Can we technically do this since uh, that's a Civil War no, movie? No, 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 no. We, but we can have Trey on for a commentary special. How about that? He he fucking loves that. That would be movie. really long. He fucking loves that. It's movie. it's 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 a cool movie because. Oh, okay. Let's wrap this. Well, bitch we're up. an old bay hour. Yes. This is fine. Hey, this is topical, yeah. penis. This is fine. Let's wrap this bitch up so we can fucking stop. This is recording. old bay hour. We can talk about whatever. It's, it's no, fine, but we but we can do we it can off the up. fucking we can clock. Wrap it up because Brian's gonna fall. Thank yep. you for joining us as always. <laughs> you know this is a. Uh, just a, it's a good movie that's all i have to say and yep. especially it's 22 years now after the fact and um for those of us that remember where we were and when it happened it's just you know it's a film to to watch and just see something that came out of it i don't know remember the rambling but it's uh it's a good movie it's it's worth watching it, it explains and, a little uh, bit of the whole mentality after 911 happened and then how that became something that was policy if that makes sense um because like in 2011 the public well, stopped giving a shit about the GWAT right with the global war on terror they stopped giving well, a fuck about that it's a yes it's a very very long I'm, I, I, they, I, won't get into it. I won't get into it much more they, but they, like I'm just saying like it, touch it's, on it a little bit yeah. but it's it's a very cool kind of a thing that they showed in the film of like right after 9-11 oh yeah let's fucking go get them Bam, and then they did. They did say that, like, well, who gives a shit anymore? Well, I give a shit, you know. And it's you know that that kind of shows it that way. But yeah, it's um, I don't know, it's a very interesting time period to have lived through and actually been cognizant for it. So, yeah, I'm really glad to have lived through the the aughts for the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, it was a really frosted crazy time tips, to live Backstreet Boys, and Sync. Wally fuck or yeah. Fudgy the Whale. Fudgy fuck the him. Whale? What the <laughs> fuck are you talking the about? Fuck are you talk- what the fuck you is that? Is this is this because you were in second grade and we were in fifth grade and we don't know what Fudgy the Whale well, is? I was in sixth grade, but what the fuck it Alright. On that so, bomb okay, show. Okay, yeah, ladies and finish the fucking thing up, Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. See you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a rating. Otherwise, Mel Gibson won't stop screaming. If you like this content, make sure to check out our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram pages. If you want to directly support our work, make sure to check out our Patreon. All these links are in the description below. Until the next time, Scuttlebutt out.